Good evening and welcome to our awards night for the 2022 Bell Shakespeare Shorts Festival. I'm Peter Evans, the Artistic Director of Bell Shakespeare. And I'm Joanna Erskine, the Head of Education at Bell Shakespeare. We're here tonight to celebrate storytelling and gathered with us online is a community of people from right across Australia. And hello to you all. We are acknowledging that we are on the land of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation and we pay our respects to their elders past and present. First Nations people have been storytelling on this land for over 60,000 years and we also acknowledge the many lands on which you are on and these new stories and films were made tonight. Peter, this is our third film festival <laughs> and finally we're in the same room together. That's worth celebrating. I know, finally here we are and it's particularly exciting tonight because we're actually streaming from our brand new home on Welch Bay. Pier 23. Of course, it's wonderful with these films that we see Australian communities and schools reflected right across Australia. And this year has been another tough one for schools and communities in many different ways. And while we've had a return to face-to-face -face learning, there have still been so many challenges, of course, including natural disasters that have impacted many schools and communities around the country. Making a film is a significant feat at the best of times, and so we'd like to thank and congratulate all students who have made films this year. We had films submitted from regional areas and capital cities in New South Wales, Victoria, Western Australia, Tasmania, Queensland and South Australia. All films engaged with Shakespeare's plays and characters in truly inventive and entertaining ways. They sure did. And so there were some rules for the festival. So we accepted films from primary and secondary schools. Students could make a retelling, so a retelling of Shakespeare's original play using his original language, or a reimagining, so recreating, reimagining Shakespeare's plays and characters, stories in some way. Uh, films could be shot on any device, so a smartphone, a tablet, a video camera, it didn't matter. Uh, and there was a time limit, so none of these films could be longer than five minutes. And we also asked students to reflect their school and or unique communities within the film in some way. We really wanted to see the cross-section of Australia from where these films were being made reflected in the films themselves. We judged films against the award categories which were excellence in direction, excellence in performance, excellence in storytelling, creative vision award, community spirit award and our two top prizes, top primary school film and top secondary school film. That's right and so our shortlisted films for 2022 were, drum roll please, A Bard Day from St Michael's Primary School in Nelson Bay, New South Wales, Grave Tidings from the University High School in Parkville, Victoria. Lost and Found, Byron Community Primary School, New South Wales. Murder in Thy Dark from Santa Maria College, Atterdale, Western Australia. Orsino and Olivia, Season 9, Episode 4 from Anson Mack, New South Wales. And Shakespeare's Lover's Island, Daisy McLean, writer and Isla McCallery, producer, New South Wales. And The Fairy Firm from St Dominic's Priory College, Adelaide, South Australia. The Room, Edmund Rice College, Wollongong, New South Wales. What News, The Cottage School, Hobart, Tasmania. Who Wrote the Plays, Queensland School of Performing Arts, Nambour, Queensland. And Zach and Lashanti, Edmund Rice College, Wollongong, New South Wales. Congratulations to all shortlisted films. And our winners will receive a selection of prizes from Bell Shakespeare and our friends at Wes Farmers Arts and Office Works, Rode Microphones and Aerial Booksellers Paddington. Mm. And we've also got Bell Shakespeare performances, workshops and a whole lot of other goodies to give away. Thanks uh, so much to all our generous sponsors. Jojo, shall we watch some films and give away some prizes? Yes, we should. So let's go to our first award this evening. Our first award is Excellence in Performance. The winners of the Excellence in Performance Award will receive a Rode Universal Vlogger kit worth $179 and a Bell Shakespeare Acting Masterclass in person or live streamed. There are so many great performances in the film submitted, but the winning film had a rock solid cast all round. Great characters, much energy and passion, and a comedic flair that had us hooked. The first winner of excellence in performance is 
What news from the college school in Hobart, Tasmania? Let's take a look. Good morrow and welcome to What News. Tasmania's clean green image continues to grow and has spread across the globe with world-renowned chefs rushing to get their hands on these unique ingredients. One primary school on Hobart's eastern shore is using their green thumbs to meet the demand. The cottage school has been busy growing sweet seasoned ingredients to make the most of this worthy trend. We cross now to Matt, who's at the cottage school, to find out more. That's right, Donald Bain. I'm here with a group of heaven hued smooth pated students who are getting their hands dirty. So, you young Kixie Wixies, tell us a bit more about what you're doing today. Well, today we're harvesting fresh, fertile, tender smelling ingredients that we're going to be cooking for the whole school. We love growing all fresh organic food and eating it. I know the Thou art a base football player. Yeah, and after lunch, we'll be packing a few boxes of our veggies and nose herbs and sending them to Scotland. Thanks for that report, Mac. We're crossing live to Beth, our correspondent in the Northern Hemisphere, while some inspired and creative chefs are unpacking their first delivery of exotic ingredients from the cottage school gardens. Beth, I believe you're in the Scottish Heath with some lovely ladies, and how are things going up there? Oh, well, not quite as expected, Donald. The um, lovely ladies are more like haggard mewling hedge pigs. What? We ordered Eye of Newt and Toa Frog, those puking fly bitten. Organic vegetables? What kind of bitch slobbling boil brain? Thanks to those wayward, mothly minded cottage school pig nuts, now we'll have to adapt our recipe. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire burn and cauldron double. Round about the cauldron go, in the garden veggies throw. Herbs that under hot heath grew, days and nights have 32. <laughs> Scrapings of a garden rake, in the cauldron boil and bake. Eye of tato, ear of corn, head of lettuce, a bit forlorn. For a charm of powerful muscle, like a health buff, boil and bubble. Pigs and peas, parsley and kale, rhubarb without the snail. Two tender hearts of artichoke into the boiling broth dot poke. Navel of a ripened orange. Hand of banana and hair of borage. All this produce from the cottage garden. Are these really ingredients for your cauldron? Double, double, we're in trouble. Mumble, grumble, mumble, grumble. Alas, we just can't go on. It's just not the same. This broth is way too wholesome. We won't be ordering exotic ingredients from those maggot pies again. Back to you in the newsroom, Donald Bain. That was Mac and Beth reporting for What News. Next up, a special report on environmental activists protesting the logging on Old Growth Burnham Wood near Dunningshain. <laughs> Eye of potato, ear of corn, head of lettuce, quite forlorn. Congratulations to the College School. I particularly love the flagrant use of Shakespearean insults. And that the hell broth was too healthy. I love that. The detail right down to the witch's sticky tape fingernails as well. So great. Great performances all around. A really clever script. And such a strong sense of community as well in this film. I feel like we all just went to Tassie. Okay. Our second award is the Creative Vision Award. For this award, we're looking for films that show real inventiveness and the way they approach and retell Shakespeare. The winners of this award receive a Rode Universal Vlogger Kit and a Bell Shakespeare Acting Masterclass in person or live stream. And all the films on our shortlist were incredibly creative, so this one was very difficult to judge. Mm. So much so that we've decided to award two winners. Uh, so Peter, who was our first winner? The filmmakers describe this as a modern reimagining of A Midsummer Night's Dream through a Marxist lens featuring Oberon, Puck, Titania and their fairy servants. Shot in the style of a documentary inspired by The Office. So the first Creative Vision Award for 2022 goes to The Fairy Firm from Dom St Dominic's Priory College, Adelaide, South Australia. Let's take a look. I do everything for this man. You know, I clean up his mess, I do all his paperwork, I make sure everything is always done on time. And the moment I finally sit down, Pop! he wants something else. You know, 
I try and tolerate as much as I can from this guy, but when I need to, I really dish it out. I need you to fetch me that sample product I showed thee once. He tells me to do a lot of things every day. How am I supposed to remember something he showed me two weeks ago? Be not my lord, your servant shall do so. Now hurry up, I won't wait all day. He expects me to put a girdle around the earth in 40 minutes? Really? The boss has been driving me up the wall lately. Tell me about it. Like you don't work in Titania's department, it seems I serve a very clean. What's got you two in such a bad mood? What's Titania done now? I'm constantly flying over hill, over dale, over park, over pale. I wander everywhere swifter than the moon's funeral. But it's never enough for her, she's constantly asking for more. Well, now that you mention it, Oberon has been up my goat as of late. Him and Titania are constantly fighting over this deal with this foreign executive from India, and I'm the one that has the cop it all. Puck, do this. Puck, do that. I love. I'm calling in sick tomorrow. Help me in. Shh, here comes Oberon. Puck, come on, we have a tight schedule. Coming, boss. Don't know if I'm in like that. What jumps Oberon? Skip hoops. Gosh, why do I even start with Titania? I mean, she's just such a difficult person. You know, you didn't hear this from me. But other managers at this company believe her to be a rash one. Right, I need this data entered into my system, these tickets booked, and this song sung to me by 5pm. My workers are in a nurturing environment. Anyone who works for me knows how hard I work while keeping my employees' well-being in mind. Can I stop now, please? Not only are my employees rewarded with my attention, but also with generous paychecks. $6.30. I hate my job. Tania, here's the minutes from your meeting. Is there anything else I can get you? Well, seeing as you took that long to get the minutes, I'm not sure I can trust you with anything else. Now see me asleep, then to your office, and let me rest. You know what? No, no more singing. I'm tired of slaving away all day. Doing all this work that is really quite unnecessary. Why do I need to make coats for your elves for the Christmas party? Who even does that? What's going on in there? Shh, this is too good to be true. Good on that fairy, Titania's a terrible boss. It's crazy what people live with these days. You'd be surprised. <laughs> Congratulations to Isabella and Charlie who wrote, directed, produced and starred in the film. Your cast was such a brilliant piece. Uh, I'm not sure who was the better boss of Oberon or Titania. Yeah, it's not something I'd considered before <laughs> I saw that film. <laughs> and now to the next deserving winner of the Creative Vision Award. The description for this film reads, When three couples are whisked away to a sunny, sandy paradise, the fairy puck sprinkles magic potion on their dinner to guarantee they will fall in love. Nothing could possibly go wrong, could it? The second winner of the Creative Vision Award for 2022 is Shakespeare's Lover's Island by Daisy McLean and Isla McCallery, producer. Let's take a look. Hello, my name is Prospera and welcome to Shakespeare's Lover's Island. I'm your host, and since every good host has a co-host, please welcome Ariel! Wait, you're not Ariel. My name is Puck, and it's a little tied up right now. Okay, anyway, let's meet today's contestants. I'm Benedict, but you can call me Benstop. I'm bad, mad, and dangerous to know. And also, I'm a bit of a ladies' man. I'd rather hear my dog bark at a crow than listen to this guy. My lady disdain, are you still here? Nobody marks you. Oh! Hi, I'm Romeo, but you can call me the Romster. I'm a pretty romantic soul. Just check out my poems on TikTok. We came in Shakespeare's Lover's Island show that other couples have done. You're already the perfect couple, aren't you, darling? Sure we are, pretty chickens. I love you. I love you more. No, I love you more. No, I love you more. OK, OK, let's stop this unsophisticated silliness. <gasps> unsophisticated? You think I'm unsophisticated?
it is. No, no, it's just, the thing is, really warm you. Oh. Hi, I'm Hamlet, but you guys can call me the Hamster. Oh, wait, um, I have a bad feeling about this guy. Puck, where did you get these contestants from? I'm the sorcerer, not a miracle worker. I can't get these people to fall in love. They're destined to hate each other. Don't worry, boss. I sprinkled a little magic potion into everyone's dinner tonight. That way they would definitely fall in love. Genius, Puck. Nothing can possibly go wrong from here. Please come draw lucky contestants to their tropical paradise. Shark Island, in Cronulla. That's your plan. Relax. Boss, it's all going to be peachy. Whoops. Sorry, let's try that again. Ah, there we go. Ladies, gentlemen, meet us back here in one hour for your romantic dinner. One hour? Sick, we've got time for a surf. You know, ladies, I've been thinking, this TV show is an absolute mountain of garbage. Total buzz. I barely give it one star. So let's get out of here. Go to Paris, Greece, Rome. Yeah, escape all these delusional men. Exactly. Better things await us, girls. how I expected tonight to go. Yeah, tell me about it. Well, I guess we can't let all this food go to waste, so... Oh, Benedict, my love! Oh, Henley, you have such gorgeous eyes. Hey, watch it, Buster. Romeo's mine. Ah, what fools these mortals be. Congratulations to the Shakespeare's Lover's Island team. It was written by Daisy, produced by Isla, and starring Piper, Lilia, Georgia, Charlotte, Daisy, and Toby. We even had an international location in there, very clever. Special mention to this group of young people this is their third film in the three film festivals. Congratulations, a huge effort. Okay, on to our next category, which is excellence in storytelling. For this award, we're looking for a film with a compelling and clever narrative, clear storytelling, great structure, a cohesive and engrossing story. And the winners for this award will receive a Road Universal Vlogger Kit and a Filmmaker's Book Package from Aerial Books valued at $200. One film really stood out from this category. It's a story about Hamlet's famous grave digger as he begins to suspect corruption in the Kingdom of Denmark. We go behind the scenes of one of Shakespeare's most famous tragedies with a tale involving the ghost of Ophelia and the evils of the king. The winner of Excellence in Storytelling for 2022 is Grave Tidings from the University High School, Parkville, Victoria. Let's take a look. When I did love, did love, methought it was very sweet to contract over the time for Marie Behove in youth. When I did love, did love. This 
skull had a tongue in it and could sing once. It might be, my lord. Or of a courtier which could say, Good morrow, sweet lord. How dost thou, sweet lord? Oh, of my lord such a one, which praise lord such a one's horse when I meant to beg it. is to be buried in the peasant's lot. This is the body of a noble girl, is it not? Why do you ask me to bury her with the rest of us? Forget this body with haste, for its burial rites are less important to you than the goings-on of the king. Surely you jest with me. I must know who I am burying if I am to make headstone. The headstone will be provided, and the funeral will be at sunrise. Well, I live to serve. I will bury this poor girl. Thou must have completed thy task by then. Tragic death did strike me town. Upon my own hand did I fall, that like king before me, my ceremony cut short, filled with corruption and malice. Why dost thou torment me, foul spirit? I have no allegiance to his majesty. Stinking evil will continue to spread across Denmark. Spirit, let me go to authority of higher power and try to rectify this wrong. Grave digger, correct? Yes, you agreeing to meet me was a great honour, a noble king indeed. No, no, the honour is all mine. So why do you trouble this royal highness? My time is as precious as my gold. Well, my lord, I believe there is corruption, running through the streets like poison. I was ordered to bury, bury the body of a noble girl, yet in a lot of peasants. Once I did bury her, she returned to me, not as a noble girl, but as an undead malice, an evil zombie of darkness. She told me her death was at her own hands, but no less forced by the corruption of kingdom. Perhaps this spirit was an agent of Satan himself, sent down as a false dove to make you question my reign. Your claim will be interrogated. If it is a trick of smoke, then we shall find the source of the fire. Now drink with me. I've planned to open this bottle, aged to perfection. Congratulations to Maddie Merksa, who wrote, directed, and produced the film, and also starred as the Grave Digger. The creative team and cast also included Miranda Honey, Ida Oziert, Izzy or Corcoran. Well done. This is really compelling and evocative. I love getting a glimpse into the Grave Digger and how conflicted he was with bearing Ophelia. I love this too. And did you see the shot with Ophelia's ghost and the magpie just catching the worm? It was incredible. Magic. Well done, Grave Tidings team. Our next category is Excellence in Direction, and we had some very clever directors this year crafting these films. 
Winners of this award will receive a Rode Universal Vlogger Kit, a one-year subscription to Mubi, an ever-changing collection of hand-picked global films from new directors and award winners. And in fact, there were two very different films that we couldn't separate. So we're again awarding two winners for this prize. The first winning film for Excellence in Direction is described as a mockumentary TV parody that takes a 2000s twist on Twelfth Night. The hit reality TV show Orsino and Olivia embarks on its ninth season and Orsino still hasn't been able to court Olivia. The first winner of Excellence in Direction is Orsino and Olivia Season 9 Episode 4 by Anson Mack, New South Wales. Let's take a look. Previously, Orsino spent the last seasons failing to court his neighbour Olivia. <laughs> He's currently wallowing in self pity because I'm trapped in a contract. Guys, I have a great idea! I swear to God, I will kill Orsino. Hey, so Orsino's new scheme is to get someone to seduce Olivia for him. Let's take a look. My name is Violet. Sorry. Cesario, and my job is to seduce women? Oh, and my brother Sebastian just died. He was wearing a white long sleeve blouse with a collar and like a, a black trim. Green pants that came up to about yay high, I'd say. You know, we're so identical. Sometimes I wonder if, you know, I'm him and he is me. Oh, Sebastian. I'm pretty sure he drowned. What a shame. And what a good looking guy too. So here's my phone number on screen if you have any information or if you're Sebastian. <laughs> Olivia unblocked me on MySpace. My letter must have arrived. I was afraid my restraining order officer might have taken it. I'll meet your Cesario guy as long as you don't turn up. I think she's into me. She's blocked me again. <laughs> Hello, welcome to Baffers. I'll start reading. One. What can I get you? We're good. Thanks for everything. So there's an air of tension in this unnamed, unspecific restaurant as Olivia and Cesario sit down. And I haven't had my lunch yet. Can I? Can I eat yet, guys? No. no! With groans and thunder love. Fire. <laughs> Sounds like a building hazard. I, I hate to say. <laughs> Sorry, you go. Oh, um, I just wanted to say that my brother died too. That's <laughs> <laughs> so funny. <laughs> it's been going really great. I, I really like him. I'm, I'm going to give him my ring. <laughs> really subtle, I know. <laughs> and what about Orsino? But not everyone seems to be in favor of this newfound relationship. I mean, my grandma died. What makes that guy any better than me? He's not as punchable as you. Huh? I said, I'll go get lunch with you. I honestly think I have a better, like, face than that Cesario guy. <laughs> you know, like, I could wear the worst outfit possible and Olivia would still choose me over him, you know? It's worth it. One day, you'll be pulling girls left and right, just like me. <laughs> Haven't you 
found anyone in the area you fancy yet? Maybe. Who? What are they like? They wear this red cap all the time and they have dark brown hair and dark brown eyes. And sound great. <laughs> and devilishly handsome. Now that is a man <laughs> with a restraining order. Mm, yes, Olivia's going to love this. Wait, wait, that's good. We just got renewed for another season. <laughs> Congratulations to Anson, writing, directing, producing and starring as the poor host Antonio under contractual obligation. Yes, and getting an unwanted season renewal, I think, at the end too. The cast also included Sasha, Matilda, Charlotte, Alicia, Zara, Julia and Holly. Well done to the entire team. Incredibly clever and really embraces its genre. We love the details, mm -hmm. especially the captions. Yes, definitely Cesario. But we have another winner of Excellence in Direction and it's a film with a very different tone. Yes, this film's tagline is Things Go Deadly Wrong on the School's Annual Drama Camp. The second winner of Excellence in Direction is Murder in Thy Dark by Santa Maria College, Atterdale, Western Australia. Let's take a look. Guys, can we all just stop fighting? Someone died tonight. I can't have someone else die. Who is it? Well, hopefully that's not an accurate reflection of what drama camp is like at Santa Maria College. <laughs> but we certainly enjoyed that trailer style film and it was brilliantly edited, really eerie and well shot. Yes, this piece was written by year nine drama class. So congratulations to all involved, particularly the directors, Victoria Lawrence and Ava Vich. It was a great encapsulation of tone, narrative and style. Yes, which brings us to the final category prize for tonight, which is the Community Spirit Prize. And this prize is all about meaningfully connecting to community or location that the students are from in the film and or the concept of community within the film. So the winners of this prize will receive a $100 Officeworks voucher, 
a Rode Universal Vlogger Kit, and a Bell Shakespeare Players In School Performance or Workshop. Now we are so grateful for the ongoing support of our long-standing partner, West Farmers Arts, and they've generously donated Officeworks vouchers for the winners of this year's festival. There was one unanimous winner of this year's Community Spirit Prize. Here's what the filmmakers wrote about the piece. Our story is set in a flood evacuation centre where Shakespearean characters ask viewers through the local news program, MSND News, to help them find loved ones who have lost contact with the, uh, who they've lost contact with after a flood. It is inspired by our community experiences earlier this year and an adaptation of Twelfth Night. The winner of the Community Spirit Prize for 2022 is Lost and Found by Byron Community Primary School, New South Wales. Let's take a look. I'm Puck for MSND News, coming to you live from the Flood Evacuation Centre, where hundreds of Valerians and Veronians have fled to safety following yesterday's unprecedented storm. The centre is run by the three lovely ladies from In Thunder, Lightning or In Rain group. Today we're here to get the first hand account from the victims who've yet to find their loved ones and the good Samaritans helping them. We just want to help know what the hurly burly's done. It was bad. Some lost and some won. Absolutely no one won. It was a flood. But we do really want to help. Can you tell me about the facilities here? We've got clothes washing over there. And what? Dining kitchen over there. I'm baking a lovely pie. Wardrobe in the corner. Finally, sleeping bugs in the back. Now, let's hear from the people still looking for friends and family. I'm seeking the most beautiful girl in the world. I need to find her. I met her last night at a ball. We didn't exchange numbers because true romance is really all we have left in this world, right? I was to meet her on her balcony at midnight. And then the rain started. Will somebody please help me? My brother Sebastian is missing. He got washed away in a storm last night. We were on a cruise and then he got thrown overboard. Or can somebody tell me you've seen him? Oh, and also, can someone get my address? I'm sick of being mistaken for a boy. I've never been this excited in my life. I met this amazing, young, handsome, incredible, fine, handsome boy. And I totally thought we were going to kiss when we met at midnight, but I was evacuated at 11.59. Yeah, it was a wild night. I met my mate Antonio Spice. He saved me from the storm last night when I was thrown into the sea. I am just so grateful. We've been hanging out, just cruising. Wait, I was on a cruise last night. Oh my God. My sister Viola. I don't know where she is. Have you guys seen her? As you can see, there's plenty of worry here, but MSND News has got some surprises planned. I bet you a cake. I want a lot of everything. Will you help me get some mud out? I need to get some mud out. Oh, gee, it's really you. Oh, it is my lady. Oh, it is my lord. Our work here is done. I'm Puck for MSND News. <laughs> Congratulations to the students and teachers of Byron Community Primary School and thank you for making and sharing such a special piece. And I wanted to share a note from the Lost and Found team which explains how the film was made. It says, our small club of 16 year five and six students examined Shakespearean tragedies and comedies and decided that our community has filled its share of tragedy this year. We chose to focus our retelling of Twelfth Night on the incredible volunteer support and happy reunions following the early 2022 floods that devastated our area. We began our writing process by writing short monologues from the perspectives of different Shakespearean characters looking for a loved one they may have lost connection with during the early flooding. Students Jasper and Isaac, working with drama teacher Mel, then use these monologues to write a script set in a flood evacuation centre where characters ask viewers through the local news program to help them find their loved ones. Hence our short film's name, Lost and Found. 
Over a semester of Wednesday recesses, the students conceived, wrote, recorded and edited this film to blend the craziness of Shakespearean comedies with our own unique community experience. We recognise that this topic is a very sensitive and personal one, and we offer our film in deep respect and appreciation of this. Our hope for this film is that it makes you smile and pays tribute to the amazing community action and support experienced during a very difficult time in our special community. Certainly does. Congratulations. So, they are our award category winners for this year, which means we've got two prizes to go. That's right. Our top primary film and our top secondary film. And they are films we've already shared tonight. That's right. And these films, in addition to the prizes they have already won, will receive $50 Officeworks vouchers thanks to West Farmers Arts and Officeworks and a copy of the complete works of Shakespeare signed by Belle Shakespeare. And as you can probably tell from this evening, we've been so impressed with the films that we've had a difficult time separating the winners. So we've decided to award two top winners for both top awards tonight. So drum roll, please. Our top prizes are... Top primary film, what news from the Cottage School in Hobart, Tasmania, and Lost and Found from Byron Community Primary School, New South Wales. And our two top secondary films are Orsino and Olivia, Season 9, Episode 4 by Anson Mack, New South Wales, and Grave Tidings from the University High School, Victoria. Incredible job, everyone. Congratulations to all. And all the winning films will be available to watch on the Bell Shakespeare website, as well as a recording of this ceremony. So please do share with your family or friends or re-watch any that you particularly loved as well. Thank you to all students who submitted films this year. It was a joy and a pleasure to watch all the films that were submitted. We're so impressed Shakespeare is in good hands. It certainly is. And a huge thank you again to our friends at West Farmers Arts, Officeworks, Road Microphones and Aerial Booksellers Paddington for generously donating prizes. Thank you to you for tuning in at home. If you're inspired to make a film, tell the young people in your life about Bell Shakespeare Shorts Festival, then join us in 2023. Submissions will open in April next year. And we can't wait to see what new stories will be dreamed up next year. So good night, everyone. Good night. <laughs>